Hey there, welcome to another episode of Mike's Collection. I'm Mike, and Casey is joining me, at least for a little while. And, uh, yeah, so the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is the newest wave of Mythic Legions figures from the Four Horsemen. So, uh, I've talked about them on a multiple videos in the past. I assume if you're watching this, you're familiar with the Four Horsemen and with their Mythic Legions line. Basically, it's an original fantasy line, not based on any uh, pre-existing media. And, uh, yeah, they've been around for a couple of years now and put out multiple waves. They started out by doing a couple of Kickstarters, and now um, they just put out smaller waves of, you know, five or six figures, and they just put them up for pre-order. So I pretty much always have some outstanding pre-order with the Four Horsemen, because before they deliver um, one series, they've already started taking pre-orders for the next. So I am happy that these figures arrived. I do still have pre-orders out for a couple other figures. Um, in their next wave, they're introducing horses into the line, which is pretty cool. So I have one of the, the like demonic horses on pre-order. Um, so yeah, and for this wave here, which I believe is called Wasteland, um, there were, I believe, six figures in the, in the wave. Um, I've never bought all of the figures they've offered. This line is just too expansive and too expensive to, uh, to buy them all. Um, you know, at the, they're six inch figures, so they run, you know, like 30 bucks or so US, which with shipping and with conversion, you know, they're probably about 50 bucks a pop for me. And when they put out, you know, 20 figures at a time, it's just, it's simply too much. So always, I always have to pick my favorites. And so for this particular wave of Wasteland, I bought three of the six. And so, yeah, if you're looking for a review of the entire wave, you'll have to check out somebody else's video. But if you're looking for the three coolest figures to be reviewed, you can just check this one out. So let's uh, set Casey down for a few minutes and we'll check out those figures. So this here is Purplore inside of the packaging. We'll get a closer look at him here. So you see he's got a uh, unique bio with his name here on the side. And otherwise, it's just kind of a generic card back that all of the uh, Mythic Legions figures share with just kind of a little history of the world that these characters inhabit. And what's nice about these cards is that they're meant that you can undo the uh, plastic here and slide the card out. So that way you can uh, take these figures out and uh, you know display them and play with them but then still put them back in their card. This slides back into place like so. And then you can still have it as like a carded figure on your wall if you want to do that. So uh, yeah, so now that we've got them partially open, let's take a look at them outside of the packaging. All right, so here is Purplore outside of the packaging along with all of his accessories. So let's take a closer look at him. So you see he's got a nice details sculpted all throughout. Um, these four horsemen sculpted figures um, especially their original Mythic Legions line, are always loaded up with lots of sculpted detail. Never any complaints about that. Now all of these parts, um, I believe every single one of them are pieces we've seen before. They tend to reuse a lot of parts in the Mythic Legions line. So like I love these big heavy spiky boots, but I have these on probably seven or eight different figures now, so it's I'm kind of ready to see something new but they still look really cool. Anyway, so yeah, so there's Purplore without any of his gear on. And I still think this works. This looks okay. Um, now you'll see here, one of the accessories he came with is this extra purple orc head. So this way you can make him um, fit in with just your orc army if you're already building one of those because they've, re they've released quite a few green orcs already. So let's uh, just pop the uh, the cat head off of him here and try on the uh, the orc head. So here you see Purplore as an orc, and I think he looks pretty cool. If you're an orc fan, I think you would want to add this guy to your collection for sure. And the body as it is is kind of this this body fits with the orc head, but 
I'm going to be displaying him as the uh, the panther guy. And so for that, they've added a little extra bulk. So I'll pop the head off again. And so then you see they give us this extra kind of neck and shoulder piece. So you can put that on over top. And then you add the purple or head back on, the panther head. And now he's bulked up substantially with this really big, thick neck. It actually looks kind of weird to me right now just because I've been looking at him for a couple of days with just the uh, the head sitting on the, the regular body. So now he looks a little ridiculously beefy, but I'll get used to it. Um, and you can hide some of that uh, maybe awkwardness by putting on some of these shoulder pads. So you saw there were holes directly in the body, so you could have plugged them right in there too. But you can plug them into this extra piece as well. So let's just do that. Takes a little bit of effort to get those in there, but it's the same with any of the Mythic Legions figures I've gotten so far. So there you see those big shoulder pads maybe help to even him out a little bit. Now another key component he needs if he's going to be a panther guy is a tail. So he's got a little ball jointed tail. I just need to plug into his butt there. So there we go. We got his, his tail in place. Now he also has a shield here, which should fit right into his hand here. A little bit of work. These figures are kind of stiff when you first get them. They actually come with a little warning that says the joints might be uh, extra stiff, so you might want to warm them up with a uh, with some warm water or a hair dryer or something just to loosen them up. But uh, I've never really had any issues. Now, otherwise, he comes with this this little strap, which you can put over over his torso there, and that comes with a little a little slot there that you can put his like bladed weapons store sword or something in there. And then he has this crazy looking bladed weapon. We'll pop that in his other hand. Now that's all I got with my perp lore. But when I saw pictures uh, online of other people who had received theirs, um, perp lore came with a really big, massive golden sword, a big thick thing and uh, kind of a cross between a sword and an ax. And I did not get one. So I emailed uh, the four horsemen and told them I was missing that piece and they said they would promptly send it out to me so if you bought this guy now you would also get a big extra sword um, unfortunately I don't have it to show you but I should have it soon so there you go there's purple order now if this guy looks a little bit familiar to you you might be thinking he looks a bit like a figure I showed you a short while ago let me just grab him so this is Kauros this was another figure that Mythic Legions released uh, in a previous wave. I just got him uh, last year. And they're basically, they have the same body type. Um, they have the same same spiky boots. Um, but the, like, their loincloth pieces are different. Um, their shoulder armor is different. They come with different accessories where you see here, Kauros came with uh, two shields, a sword, and you know, which is different from the, the knife and the shield that uh, the purple or got. And if you're finding their, their names a little odd and their looks a little familiar, that's because both of these guys are homages to the Masters of the Universe line. So he is Kauros and he is based on Battle Cat. And the name comes from the fact that Battle Cat's alter ego, Cringer, was a coward. And then Purplore is based on the evil Panthor. And uh, the name Purplore, I guess, is pretty self-explanatory. So let me just bring a Panthor up here for a second. So this here is Panthor from the Masters of the Universe Classics line. So you see here he's purple, big purple cat, green armor, removable helmet. Yeah. Let's pop that up. So there you go. There's his big mean purple cat face. So that is what Purplore is based on. And I'm sure Purplore looks pretty cool mounted on top of him. Makes for a pretty cool steed. 
or purple ore. So there you go. That's a, a look at purple ore from the Mythic Legions line. I think he's really cool. I like Kauros a lot. Um, and I like purple ore uh, probably just as much. They go great together. And there's multiple figures in the Mythic Legions line that are homages to the Masters of the Universe um, with more still to come. So yeah, if you're interested in this uh, Masters of the Universe line, I'm not sure how deep it's going to go. But uh, yeah, you should definitely start with these guys because they're both really cool. And here is Krona inside the packaging. Get a bit of a closer look at him here. So you'll see here he's got his original bio with his name on the side as well. And then the standard packaging in the back. So not much else to see there. So let's pop him open and take a look. So here is Krona outside of the packaging along with all of his accessories there. So we'll get a closer look at him. So you see he's got the green skull face um, with this kind of metallic purple jaw that is articulated so he can open and close his mouth there. Otherwise, it's pretty standard articulation. He's got a big muscular body, which is different from most of the other skeleton characters I have. Um, the, the skeletons are one of my favorite set, like subsets of the Mythic Legions and I have quite a few of them now. Um, so yeah, most of them are on skeleton bodies with little bony arms. So Krona is a little different in that he's got this big muscular body with just a skull head. Now as far as legs go, you'll see he's got those same spiky boots that we saw on Purplore and Kauros. Um, again, I'm going to guess that probably most of the parts we've seen here are pieces we've seen prior. This might be... A new piece I don't know from looking at it at a glance but I'm just gonna guess probably not but that's all right like I said the reuse of parts um, it allows them to produce a lot of figures as long as they create you know interesting ways to put these parts together and interesting paint jobs I don't mind some reuse of parts it's just at this point there's so many figures in this line and so many of them are using the same parts that I do hope we see some brand new parts integrated into the line very soon but anyway I think Krona looks awesome this really comes together nicely now uh, one of his accessories he has an alternate head as well so if you want to display this guy not as a member of your skeleton army you could pop his head off and put this on so let's do that so here he is as kind of a dark knight character and this looks pretty cool too i like this helmet quite a bit and we've seen it before as well oh, and even the horns come off i didn't know that but look at that. So you can pop the horns off and there you go. Even more customization possibilities. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, let's go back with the skull head for now. Okay, so we've got the skull head back on him. Now let's take a look at the other accessories he has. So he also has a little uh, a strap that can be put over his torso. So maybe we'll actually use that for him. Pop the head off. There we go. He's got his, his strap there. He's only got one piece of shoulder armor. He has the, the notches for both. And by the way, there's other pieces you can, you can customize these with that like the, you can get wings and a few other things there's a strap on the back which is pretty cool but there you go so now he's got uh an armored shoulder pad for that one armored arm he has and if you're wondering why he only has one armored arm uh that'll make sense in a minute uh now he also has this little crown and this is also um serves a purpose Let's see that. that looks pretty cool and now for weapons he's got an axe a mace with a chain a dagger and a sword now other than the spot here I'm not sure there's anywhere else he can store any of these weapons I don't think he has any cheese or anything for his knife so yeah, it's pretty much whatever he can hold. So 
If I'm going to give him anything, I'm going to give him the mace. Because I think that's a pretty cool weapon. And uh, again, I doubt any of these are unique to him. But I don't, I don't think I have this mace with any of my other characters yet. So let me just arm him up a little bit. So there we go. There's Krona all armed up. I've chosen to give him the mace, the axe. And then he's got the sword tucked away in the back. And I wasn't sure uh, when I was showing you the accessories a moment ago if this was his or if I just left this laying behind from Purplore. But this, this is actually his. I have Purplore set aside. So he comes with two of these. So you could kind of, uh, you know, run them across his torso and then he could store his knife in, the, in uh, this one here, I suppose, if you wanted to. So you could do that. But there you go. So a very cool look of the weapons. Now, like Purplore, though, Krona is an homage to a Masters of the Universe character. If you're a Masters of the Universe fan, I'm sure you can tell immediately who this is supposed to be. But this is an homage to Trapjaw. So here is the classic Trapjaw. And here is the 2002 version of Trapjaw. So yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty obvious. Um, now, I am a little surprised they went with a skull head um, as opposed to a more like, monstrous head because uh, Trapjaw has never had a skull face. But uh, I like it. I think the use of the purple jaw is kind of cool. And I don't need these homage figures to be too spot on that it looks like just kind of a knockoff. I like that they take, uh, you know, take some twists and turns and it's not not as obvious as it maybe could have been so i do like that they changed it up and gave him a skeleton face one thing i am surprised by though is that they didn't take the opportunity to maybe have his hand be removable and give him some extra weapons because that's what every trap draw figure from the original vintage figure to these like the classics figure to the 2000x figure they always had these extra parts from his one mechanical arm. So there's like hooks and lasers and drills and whatever else. So yeah, I'm kind of surprised they didn't give him something to replicate that function. But I guess maybe that would have resulted in them tooling some new parts. And they try and seem to do these um, as affordable as they can by using the parts they already have and just painting them up. So considering what they had to work with, I think they did a pretty good job of homaging Trapjaw. Although I will say I don't really like the way this crown fits. It kind of keeps falling off of him. I don't know if I'll display it on him or not. I kind of like it without the crown. So there you go. And as for his name, uh, a lot of people maybe don't realize, but Trapjaw, his name before it was Trapjaw was Cronus. And uh, so, yeah, it makes sense that they would name this guy Krona as an homage to Trapjaw before he was Trapjaw. So anyway, really cool figure. I like this guy a lot. So here are all of my Masters of the Universe homage figures thus far. So you can see we've got Panthor, Battlecat, Trapjaw, He-Man, and Skeletor. Now, there have been a couple other ones that I have not picked up. There's also an Orc version of Man-at-Arms and an elf version of Tila. And currently on pre-order, there's uh, new versions uh, that are tributes to both She-Ra and to Hordak. So yeah, it's not too late to get in on this if you want to start. They're a really cool kind of subset of the Mythic Legions line. And this here is Argamedes inside of the packaging. So unlike the other figures, rather than a blister card, he comes on a box. And this guy is one of the nine inch sized um, like ogre figures. So like the other characters, he's got a little bio on the side there with some unique uh, artwork of his face. Um, and then this here, this is just kind of generic packaging. This is what all the ogre sized figures have come in thus far. So some pretty nice artwork on there, but uh, let's take a look at this guy outside of the box. So here is Argamedes outside of the box. And so this guy is a really cool figure. He's big and heavy. It's hard for me to get him all on screen here because he's so big. But uh, the face 
is kind of the coolest part of this figure because it's, uh, again, I think the only new part of this figure is the head. The body is completely reused. We've seen all these parts before um, on the last wave of Mythic Legions figures because it was just in the last wave that they introduced this new nine inch scale figure. So just so you can see how big this guy is, I'll bring up one of the other figures I just showed you for a comparison. So here you see Archimedes next to Krona and you can see he's quite a bit bigger where most of the figures in the Mythic Legions line are six inches. There are a few smaller like dwarf characters that are four inches and there was uh there have been three or four 12 inch trolls released but this nine inch ogre scale is relatively new and i'm going to bring in one of the ogres i got in the last wave so let's get him out of here for a second now you can see the similarities in these guys like the armor is the same the bare feet are the same the armor on these shins is the same um a lot the armor on the arms there you know a lot of it's the same some of the pieces that might look a little different like the belt buckle i believe this was used on one of the other ogre figures as well one of the giants so yeah there's not a whole lot of difference here it's really just the head and to be honest even the heads have quite a bit of similarities with that kind of underbite and the big teeth protruding there, the pointy ears. Um, it's really the fact that this guy's a Cyclops and the paint scheme that really makes him stand out. Because in the first wave of Nine Inch figures, there was one kind of Caucasian giant character, and then there was two green uh, like ogres. So the fact that he's a Cyclops, this is a new race of characters. I don't know if they're all going to be blue, or maybe that's just Archimedes, but uh, this is a cool figure. Now, as far as accessories go, Archimedes came with a helmet. And it fits on him pretty nicely. Comes over right around his ears there and sits snug over his eye. And you can adjust it a little bit depending on how low you like it to sit. I kind of like it nice and snug over his eye there. So there's that. And then otherwise, he only came with this big axe as well another piece I don't quite understand what these are, are for I had the same pieces come with one of my other ogre figures um, like this splits apart and you could you could put the end of this on there if you wanted them to, to have just a, a really small axe otherwise I don't know this here has like two male ends. I'm not really sure what I'm supposed to do with it. So anyway, I'll just end up checking that aside. But I do like him having the extended axe as opposed to just the little small one. Put that back on there. So there you go. Let's arm him up. So here you see Archimedes with his axe. Now, as far as accessories go, I'm fine with him just having the one axe and the removable helmet is nice too. But his uh, packaging describes him and his race of Cyclops people to be the weaponers of the Mythic Legions universe. So they build all the uh, the weapons for all the warriors. And if that's the case, I would kind of would have thought maybe they would have splurged and given him kind of a unique, cool weapon rather than just this kind of standard axe. But, uh, oh well, maybe we'll see some more unique pieces with, uh, with future Cyclops characters. Anyway, I don't have a whole lot to say about Archimedes because I did just review the three other giant figures about a month ago or so. I'd recommend you go check out that video. And uh, yeah, this guy is pretty much the exact same. He's got all the same articulation. So you see there he's got uh, you know, articulated in the, the knees, the, the ankles there. Um, elbows, good, good ball jointed, good range of motion here on the shoulders. He's got, uh, you know, he's articulated the torso so he can spin around like this. Um, the head, so he can, it's a little limited in movement, but he can spin around and look up and down a little bit. Anyway, he's a really cool looking figure. Um, I really like this giant size the nine inch scale for the mythic legions i'm glad they introduced it because i really think it adds it adds to the line adds to the diversity 
my shelf my shelf is starting to look really cool now that I've got all these different scales. I actually have yet to buy one of these little four inch figures, but uh, hopefully I'll do that soon. And yeah, again, this is just another really cool figure from the Four Horsemen. So I highly recommend you seek out any of these three figures that I showed you today. So that is my review of the latest Mythic Legions figures. I uh, hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, make sure to hit like, subscribe to the channel maybe, and you can leave me and Casey a comment as well, and we'll be happy to uh, get back to you. Now Casey joined me for a couple of videos uh, when I first started doing this about a year ago, uh, but she hasn't been around for a while, so while I've got her, <laughs> while I've got her here, I want to show her off because she's just the cutest little thing, isn't she? So there you go, Casey. Say hi to everybody. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.